Alright guys, welcome to another installment of the Mobile Suit Guides and Tips series on my YouTube channel for Gundam Battle Operation 2. Battle Oper- I again enunciate that, my bad. Um, but today we're going to focus on one of my favorite suits, especially my favorite Gelgoog, the high mobility type. So, this is a very interesting suit. We're going to run the 550 costs through all of our you know, practice today, and, uh, yeah, we're gonna look at the three builds, yes, three builds I have for this, especially at 550 cost nowadays. As you can see on this first build, let me back out, so just get general reference, this is what the suit looks like, it looks like a normal Goog, but, you know, it basically, the main defining factor of it is the fact that it has a specialized backpack, and it as you could tell, it will have um, the MMP on the side of the back of the backpack, and the beam naginata will not be across the, where the backpack is, like the early production. It's easy to get the two confused, but look at the backpack as the main signifier that is definitely a high mobility type and not a early production. Um, the suit's really fun. It's really fast. It is well, as the name says, it's high mobility. Um, it's got space topography, so it means it uh, has faster boost recovery in space. It's slightly faster in space, and it has a higher recovery time, faster recovery time, I mean, in space as well. Um, this is one of the only Gilgooks I recommend to not use the beam rifle and use a rocket launcher on. So, with that in mind, let's hop into the build. So, as you see, from this first build, I have pumped health, melee resistance, beam, um, range damage, I mean, and me melee boost and thrusters on. Thrusters come from the full enhancement I've done at the 550 cost of this suit, so there's no parts for that on this version of the build. But here we go. What we have here at level, at the first build, for level 3 high mobility type Gelgoog, we are using the high mobility rocket launcher. You get this rocket launcher from the Gelgoog cannon, or the Dom cannon, I think, comes with it too. So, the multi-gun type, I mean. Um, it is my go-to weapon for the high mobility type on the ground. And I use the on-level Beam Naginata. Well, since most of the time when I'm playing 550, 550 it will be unrestricted. I use level 4, but otherwise I will use the on-level. It has hand grenade type Z, type Z, which does 1200 damage. If I'm right, this is the same grenade that the high mobility Zaku R2 uses, the late model. So it is very damaging weapon, and it has three ammo charges. It, you know, it's really good at destroying legs. It's, it's very just interesting. It's a very good poke suit, for that matter, because it has these grenades. It has the MMP-80 machine gun, the same one that the early production Gilgook has. So if you saw that video, it has the exact same stats as that weapon. It has the Gilgook shield, same shield. So you know, same stats from the early production. For the first build, I run new model frame level 1, I run melee enhancement programs level 2 through 4, I run strengthened frame level 5 and 4, I run enhanced firing program level 3, and I run anti-melee armor level 3. The reason why I run anti-melee armor, which is consistent through all these builds, is because like the early production Gilgook, the, Gil the Gilgook high mobility type, m my bad for the stutter, right there um is weak in the melee defense department is ballistic resistance also isn't that good and his strongest defense is beam resistance so i don't feel a need to pump into it at least with this build um i put range boost on to help with the damage on the machine gun and the grenades as well as the bazooka it doesn't hurt so throwing it on there um a really spick in the melee boost this is a melee oriented blue it is Really dangerous this is with its speed and being a blue Zooka. So keep that in mind. It has 130 speed like most other Gilgooks. It has 70 thrusters base. Um, but with enhancements it goes up to 71. So don't need to throw any thruster parts on there per se. As well as with this version of the build. Can't really fit a thruster part on even though I can fit level 1. Version 2 of the build. This is the space build for this suit. You can see I use Beam Rifle on level, the Gelgoog Beam Rifle. I use the Beam Naginata on level. 
I, it has the hand grenades, the submachine gun, and all the sub weapons are the same. I run anti melee armor level 3, still. I run enhanced melee programs level 2 through 4. I run enhanced, I run thruster control systems level 3. I run strengthened frame level 3 and 4, and I run enhanced firing program level 3. So for this version of the build, we take a little bit out of health and we start specking into speed. The reason being is because the suit has space topography, which means it moves faster in space, has faster boost recovery in space, and it gets up faster in space. So essentially, this suit is really good at space combat, and therefore, using this build allows you to basically zoom around the maps and chase down whoever you see fit, including those pesky psycho Zakus that think that they actually have melee defense. They don't. <laughs> you will two-shot them if you actually land a good melee. Um, so the methodology about the space build is speed over survivability. If I'm able to dodge the shots, I won't need defense per se. That's why we don't put any we don't put any ballistic or beam defense on this suit whatsoever. For our next build, we're going full tank. We are specking into nothing but defense. This is made to basically counter or survive the gun, the Mark II, a lot easier. So we are running the Bullpup, aka the high mobility rocket launcher again. We are running the Beam Nagi at level 4 for unrestricted, level 3 for 550 cost. Sub weapons stay the same. We are running anti melee armors level 2 and 3. We are running enhanced melee prog programs level 2 through 4. We are running strengthened frames level 4 and 5, and we are running anti-beam armor level 2. So the methodology behind this build is the sense of we are going to be in the meat the entire time because of the how the suit plays. Um, but the thing is, it doesn't have high melee priority. So therefore, suits like the early production Gilguk, the standard Gundam, raids of all types at this cost, the Mark II and the GPO one will swing through our melees. So we basically need this health and the melee resistance this time to really help survive. The beam resistance is to help cut down the damage from beam rifles from the from the Mark II, the GPO one, and supports that like the Hizak Custom, the GPO four. Possibly you could use that. You could use this build in space too. Um, stuff like that. Um. Melee boost is still required essentially essential part of this build, so you know, there's plus twenty-two across all three builds. We're no thrusters, so that plus one comes from the enhancements. So that in mind, um let's look at the skills for this suit. It has dodge roll, level one, it has per balancer, high performance balancer, it has forced injectors, which the seventy thrusters really helps out with, so I really don't need um, thruster parts. High spec and back, which is really good for space. Melee combo controller, so two swing melee because it's level one. Enhanced tackle level one. As if you saw the um, early production go, we go over this skill. It is basically your counters and damage from your tackle is increased by 50%, and it covers an extra five di five percent distance. So it's really useful. And it has special leg buff for level one, so it takes less damage to the legs and stress on the legs from boosting, and uh, dodging is reduced by 10%. So, with that in mind, we can uh, go over and hop to training. So, we'll see you over there. Alright, so here we go in training. Um, this suit has a couple of play styles I like to teach about and or observe in combat. So, as you can see, we're going with our um, big old non-tank build for the ground. Um... Basically, for this suit, as I said before, it's all about melee. Its range is really good with poke because of the hand grenade, so it can really just chunk legs. The machine gun has the same um, emphasis it used as the early production Gelguk, so it's more along the lines of a ranged finish if you can't close in from the melee, and to pick off really low health enemies within a cluster, so you don't get tackled, you don't risk the chance of you getting swung through by a high priority melee swing. So, you know, it's kind of the safe secure a kill weapon more than the grenades because you want to use these grenades the more along the lines of a chasing weapon because you can uh, boost stop throw boost stop throw you know deal damage to enemies legs so on and so forth so 
the basic premise behind bazookas at high cost like this is not like you can hit the ground and try and splash damage them but you're gonna try and aim more for actually hitting the leg modules as much as you can because normally if you miss a leg module you're either gonna miss by a mile or you still hit the ground and stagger them so you're gonna aim for the leg your speed allows you to fly up at insane speeds do a melee combo get the hit in the ground and retreat your high thrusters count for the ground allows you to basically boost around the force injector and balancer allow you to basically maneuver around the battlefield as much as you want you th your thrusters until you overheat them their suits main um, skill gap comes into thruster management you can easily easily screw yourself over poor thruster management so since you're not a big old tanky Gelgoog, but you still share the freaking hitbox of all the other Gelgoogs, you gotta basically make sure that you're staying mobile and staying elusive and being a constant side flank behind threat to whatever you find. You're just trying to basically instill fear in the enemy team because you don't got ranged options to really output any sort of range threat with this suit on the ground with this build so you're trying to basically put in the threat of I can always just fly up and melee you if you're not careful you know watch your back try and chase me I dare you I'm gonna get around this corner bazooka your kneecaps chop you down hit you let's do this again chase me I dare you kind of mentality so that's the philosophy behind this suit so, as you can see, this raid over here, this unit 3, this G3, is over here chilling. I'm flying up max speed, rocket, downswing. You don't really have to kind of, you don't have to lead in with the neutral swing on this suit because of the speed that you fly up to an enemy with, and especially the speed and the reload of the high mobility rocket launcher. So, you can just literally go in with the downswing. Get the guaranteed knockdown. It does a good chunk of damage to any raid. Hit him on the ground. Finish him off. And still fear in the enemy raid. That's the main thing you should do with this suit. The thing is, with the rocket launcher and the beam rifle, you cannot break maneuver armor. So therefore, you're going to have to try and outplay the thruster gauge and the patience of the enemy raid. If you're able to do that, you'll be able to actually do damage to them as you start getting into their head. Hopefully... You can instill the fear that if they see you, they better think twice about going after your support or trying to fight you because you're just going to end up chunking them for half their health with one melee swing. And they're not going to like that. Because most raids don't build defense. Raids that do build defense are probably the ones that you should kind of not worry about. But in the sense of you should appreciate the challenge. Um, as you can guess, this suit is really weak to melee defense defense oriented suits so when you see a suit not getting chunked for for a raid not getting chunked for about four three four k to three point three and a half thousand damage from your downswing without a neutral like so if you do just the downswing so there's no negative debuffs to your damage you know and say instead of doing four thousand six hundred and seventy three to this um g3 I was doing 4,000 damage to this G3. I should be a little bit more concerned because it has high melee priority. If I mess up in a melee fight, it's going to win. You know, it's got better rocket stun and it's got a sub beam rifle. My ballistics are really low. Those rockets are going to hurt. You know, my beam defense on the basic tank version of the suit is not high. Well, it's high, but it's not as high as it can be. You know, so this suit can be outplayed if you overestimate your opponent especially when they are specced around anti-melee one of the big advantages this suit has is the fact that you have the beam naginata if you saw the early production Gelgoog's video the beam naginata has a large area coverage with most of its swings the only area your swings technically don't cover is behind your left shoulder towards the center and to behind the right foot of your suit so looking here we'll go back to over to his g3 aka the unit 3 the neutral swing will hit to the side 
right? Using this building, this is swinging to the left, all right? This is a left side swing. We'll hit the building. All right, so you're covering from out from extending out from your left over to your right, basically a full sweep in front of you. Your right-handed swing, so your right side swing, covers from in front to your left to behind your right shoulder in hitbox. The downswing, as I will exhibit on this G3 again, will go back behind your right foot. If you're placed properly, I will hit this G3. I'm a little too far forward. So essentially, if I'm right here and I swing behind me, I hit the shield of the G3. Actually, no, I don't. I hit its shoulder. And I do damage and knock it over. So, it swings behind right and hits behind your right shoulder. But the thing is, the hitbox goes from, from top left down to bottom right behind you. So, as I said before, it doesn't cover your behind left of your suit, so just keep that in mind. If you're playing the tank version of the suit, it's the same premise, same with the space version. It is instill fear, always make your melee presence known. You have 55 modifier with the build at 550 cost, no matter which build it is. You know, thruster management, unlike what I did right there. I never want to overheat myself like that. Ever. But yeah, you're a blue Zooka. Run in there, rocket, melee, go back in, melee, so on and so forth. My thruster gauge is up. You know, use thrusters to cover distance. About three quarters of the way full from overheating, I'd start walking a little bit, because you do have decent walk speed in this suit. You know, closing on enemy. That way you have thrusters to capitalize on a rocket hit. You know? I wouldn't boost around too much after hitting an enemy with the melee swing. I'd start walking. Unless I'm getting engaged by a secondary source. Then I'd think about or use my boost to either get out of there. I, I wouldn't try and roll. This suit doesn't have maneuver armor. So, like, I can easily get stunned out of my boost. But at the same time, your dodge roll is a very valuable resource in the sense of... If this grand, if this grandpa gun decide to actually try and melee me, and he had a rocket or a stun, and granted, if there's enough opening for me to recover enough from the two second stun, I'd roll. I would not stand there and try and boost away because the beam sabers hitbox for Federation suits is very long in front of it, the suit. I'm not gonna try and fight that. I'm gonna roll and try and hit them with the rocket melee myself. So. Essentially, three things to worry about this suit. High melee defense, um, high melee priority enemies, and most supports. Um, the main support on the crown you need to be worried about is the mudrock. The mudrock will absolutely shred you. It does not care who you are. It just ends you. Um, your main general threats at 550 cost and 500 cost are the Mark II. The GPO-1, the GPO-3, and um, the Grandpa in the early production Goku. The Grandpa Gundam in early production Goku. Um, the main raise you should really fear is the BD-2. Um, the GPO-2 is not a threat to you, but it can do big amounts of beam damage. And its melee hits like a truck. Um, the Cabrera Tetra can easily shred through you. And the Hyakushiki does not care who you are per se. It will end you. Especially with this t double stun from range. So don't... Don't be like overconfident about it, fighting that suit. Um, in space, GPO4. That has the support you stay away from. Don't... And Super Gundam. Don't, don't even try. If you try and you succeed, good on you, you know, but don't take them on alone if you have the option. They have too many, too many stuns to fight against. They both output a lot of beam damage, but they both also have really strong melees. The GPO-4 has two swings from a strong melee weapon. The Super Gundam has the Mark II's melee weapon, which hits like a truck. Don't, don't even try. Um... In space, General Zong Jiang can kick your ass, but you can fight against it. 
um, because it's got a little melee defense. Um, Mark II, still. It's got space topography, like you do, so it's a big threat. Um, GP01 of full burning, stay away. It's the same thing as the GP04, but it's a blue, so therefore it has no reductions against you. Um, and it has overboost, so therefore it can tackle four times without overheating. Be careful of that as your melee suit. Um, Yakushiki's in space with space topography. Gerbera Tetra's in space. GPO2's in space. BD2's in space. You can catch the drift there. Um, so yeah, no, this suit is really fun. It's a skill-oriented Gelgook. It is my favorite Gelgook to play. Um, outside the VG. V this suit and the V- This Gelgook and the VG, they're both high mobility types. They both serve the same purpose. The VG being ranged, this one being melee. But oh my god. This suit's fun. It's a good Smash Mouth suit. And yeah, this is how I build it. And this is how I think it should be played. If um you like this video and you think I'm doing good, um leave a like down below. If there's anything you've seen in this video that doesn't either match up, you got any ideas on how you play it, um, anything I missed, suits you want to see in the future, let me know down in the comments. Um but yeah, make sure to hit that like video, that like, <laughs> like the video, and um, yeah, I'm gonna be putting out more of these videos. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see uh, them come up in your subscriber box. I know you, YouTube. I see those algorithms. Um, but yeah, this is the Gilgu high mobility type. Pretty good suit. I recommend it. And so this has been Grandy Warrior, aka Deranged Pyro, aka just call me Pyro, I guess, from now on. Signing out.